and welcome to day one of the five days of feeling fantastic i am so happy that you are joining me here so welcome everybody to day one of five days of feeling fantastic let me just as we are all beginning to join let me just make sure um, that you can all hear me let me just do a quality sound check because um, it would be a shame for me to start doing all of today's session without you being able to hear me so let's just have a listen yes so welcome welcome i'm gonna wait a minute or two until we get people joining us um this is as i've said the first day day one of this um series of five days of feeling fantastic if you have been following me um for a while this may seem familiar to you because this is the third time that I am doing um, five days of feeling fantastic. And every time that I do this, I get great response from women, how practical it is, how um, implementable it is, how easy it is to start to notice changes. So I do this five days of feeling fantastic about twice a year in this facebook group you will not hear it or see it anywhere else it is exclusive to all the members of this facebook group and if you have pre-registered you will get every day an email with an accompanying workbook and the links the direct links in my youtube channel to today's video if you have not pre-registered that is totally fine I will be here with you every day this week, 2 p.m. Um, UK time, 4 p.m. Um, Israel time, and 9 a.m. Eastern time. So please um, join us. If you still want to register, I will put the link um, for registering in the comments of this video a bit later. You can still register, you can still get the emails, you can still get the workbook. But in the meantime, let's get started. And I can see we have some people watching us. If you have comments, please put the comments in um, below, in the video chat below, in the, in, the, in the comments below this video so that I can see you, I can hear you, I can already see we have some people joining us. Feel free to ask questions, feel free to um, in, engage and interact with me as you would like in the comments to this video. But let's get started um, because I don't want to waste any of your time. And really what we have to talk to about today is um, really quite important stuff. Um, every day this week, we will be looking at a specific common menopause symptom that many women experience. I want to put a disclaimer or a caveat. The first thing that we all need to know as midlife perimenopausal or menopausal women is that menopause symptoms are not a prerequisite. Pain, suffering, struggle, confusion is not a prerequisite for going along your menopause journey. Many women do experience different things. They are common. That does not mean it is normal. If you are suffering and struggling with a specific menopause symptom, don't let anyone or you tell yourself, do not let anyone tell you and do not tell yourself, this is just normal, this is just the way it is, this is par for the course, this is how it goes. No, you do not need to suffer and struggle. Many women do, it is common. But there are plenty of ways to help you navigate your menopause symptoms, find the right management and treatment strategies for yourself. Because really, even though we are going through hormonal fluctuating times, many, many women navigate these times with little or no symptoms. And you don't just need to suffer in silence or suffer at all. So that is the first thing I want to say. So, and, and the second thing I want to say is that, sorry, is that many women would experience different menopause symptoms. So what you experience may be very different to what your neighbor or your best friend or your 
sister or your aunt or your mother, every woman experiences menopause in a different way. That is why menopause treatment and menopause management needs to be so personalized and so specific because it needs to take into account your health journey and health story leading up to today till you start to experience the symptoms and what your specific experience is in perimenopause and menopause. So treatment will be different depending on what you are experiencing and no one should say this is the way to treat menopause because it should be a personalized approach. Um, hi ladies, hi everyone who's joining me, so happy to have you here. Um, so different women will experience different menopause symptoms to varying degrees they will um, experience it your symptoms can range in how they impact you and how they impact your life so today we're going to be looking at one specific symptom every day this week we will look at other things and if this resonates with you let me know if it doesn't that's fine find out from your friends if maybe they're experiencing some of these things and you know, you can then give them this useful information to help them. So today we're going to be looking at what happens when you feel tired, sluggish, low energy, fatigue, lethargic, all those real low energy, down, um, exhausted feelings that can be expressed in different ways. So let's firstly start off with why you may be feeling it. And it's not just because you've had a busy day um, and you just feel tired. It's not because it may be super hot outside. It's not because you, um, you know, didn't sleep well last night. It may be because you didn't sleep well last night. It may be because you are suffering or experiencing insomnia, sleep changes, um, disturb sleep. That is very common in perimenopause and menopause, which will obviously make you feel tired the next day. But assuming, and we are going to assume that you have no other ill health factors like thyroid issues um, or any other um, clear medical explanation as to why you may be feeling tired, um, low energy, lethargic, fatigued, um, sluggish. Mostly it is because of our changing hormones and the way that those changing hormones are impacting how our body is functioning and able to show up. And the way that our body is able to respond to things that um, we do in our day-to-day -day life that maybe didn't affect us before. Remember, I say this the whole time, what worked before won't necessarily work now. What worked for you in your 20s and your 30s may not work for you now. So you could lead a crazy busy life, running around, looking after your kids, working, um, taking care of other responsibilities, um, showing up for you know, friends or going out in the evenings and being able to wake up the next morning full of energy. That may not be the case in your 40s and your 50s. Plus, we have extra triggers today that are going to be impacting us more. What we eat, when we eat, how we eat, stress, work-life balance, and how much you are nourishing yourself hormonally and boosting those feel-good hormones. All of those factors will exacerbate your already um, hormonal imbalance, which is already triggering these feelings of low energy, lethargic fatigue, etc., etc. Um, plus, a sedentary lifestyle, sitting in front of a computer all day, um, lack of blood flow that does not help to wake us up. It doesn't help to get our blood moving and our heart pumping. And you may do exercise, um, you may be a runner, you may go to the gym, you may swim. All of that is amazing and super, super important. But if you do that for one hour a day, and then you're sitting in front of the computer the rest of the day, as amazing as that exercise is, you are still sitting for the rest of your working day. 
um, you're not getting up very much, you're not moving very much, there is less blood flow. And if you're eating um, high carbohydrate meals during the day, if you're having a high carbohydrate lunch, many of us feel that real dip in energy levels around three o'clock. That is because of what you're eating at lunchtime that is not nourishing you. It is actually creating a sugar high and then a very, very big sugar drop, which then puts us more into fatigue and low energy. So there is a lot going on here as to why you may be feeling um, all these low energy, tired, sluggish, which then have knock on effects. They have knock on effects in how you can show up in the day, the energy you have to give to work, family, other responsibilities, the decisions you make, the food you choose to eat. How many times do we choose to eat um, high sugar, high carb, those feel good foods when we feel tired? That is sort of what our body craves, but really it's actually not what our body needs. Um, when we feel, you know, anatomically, biologically, when we feel low energy, tired and sluggish, we, um, our body thinks we need to have that energy boost, that energy source to be ready to be on alert in case we have to, you know, run away from that tiger in case there's a stress, in case there's something that has to happen that we need to have any, a, a, a rapid energy source for. Obviously, if you're sitting in front of your desk, in front of the computer the whole day, you don't need to have that energy boost. Plus, you need to have been eating foods that are going to sustain you so that you don't have that dip and don't have that drop. So, that is sort of why it's happening. What can we do about it? Well, there are a couple of things. Firstly, we're gonna to today do a yoga practice that is gonna be a wake up, energy boosting, blood pumping yoga practice. And you can do this at any point of the day. So if you are feeling um, in the middle of the day, if you're working from home, which many of us do um, now, or even if you have, if you're in an office that you could close the door, if you could go somewhere to a park for 10, 15 minutes in the middle of the day, and when you have that low energy feeling, you can do the yoga practice we're going to do today. In the morning when you wake up, um, if you don't have time to go to the gym in the morning or if you go to the gym later on in the day, or if you do your exercises later on in the day, but you need to just sort of wake up and have that energy boost, um, today's yoga practice is going to be able to help you. You need no yoga experience, no prior knowledge of yoga, and today and throughout the whole week, when we practice, I will be um, showing you how to do it at higher levels and at lower levels. So you can do it according to your level and according to your experience. Um, there is no reason to think that you can't do this. Everyone can do it according to their level and there are no expectations or assumptions. Do it as it works for you. Um, in addition to the yoga practice that we're going to do today, a few other things that we can do to keep our energy levels high. The first thing, um, and really the, the most important thing on a, the most simplistic level is what we eat and when we eat. And as I've said, that heavy carb, heavy sugar meals put us into an insulin decline within about an hour, sends us over the edge into a deep, deep energy drop, and we just have no ability to function after high carb, high sugar meals. Um, like a yummy bowl of pasta, for example, or um, a bread roll or, an, or a sandwich, even if it is a brown bread sandwich. Um, so think about the foods we are eating. We want to have a lot of vegetables, good um, proteins, good fat, especially in the middle of the day to keep those energy levels up. We want to try not to snack too much, especially not the high sugar content snacks. Even if it's healthy sugars, um, we really want to try and keep the snacking to protein snacks, good fat snacks like nuts, berries, um, make yourself an omelette in the middle of the day if you're still hungry after your lunch, um, vegetables. We really want to try and keep those um, healthy sugar content snacks out because you may have a um you know your lunch at one at 12 or one o'clock and then by two three o'clock you've got that energy dip so you're going to want your energy boosting food your sugar your um you know whatever type of um 
healthy snack or unhealthy snack that you have then, which is just going to perpetuate that insulin peak and then that insulin trough, which is one of the contributors to um, the, the symptoms that we're feeling. Um, other things are stress, the cortisol levels that are going on in our body, the boosting of the cortisol that you know keeps us aware and alert, also has um, eventually very exhausting impacts on our body. There's a lot going on here that we need to be thinking about, but let's look at the solutions for today, and that is um, the yoga practice that we're going to do. Um, yes, there's been a question about coffee without sugar. Great, great question. So um, different people respond to caffeine in different ways. I personally don't drink caffeine. Caffeine for me doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't give me a good high or a good buzz. Um, if you have to see how coffee and caffeine feels on you, drink your coffee and then see within the hour, how do you feel after your coffee? Um, you know, half an hour after drink your coffee, how do you feel? Personally, I have no problem you drinking coffee without the sugar. Um, have a good quality milk with it, have an almond milk with it, have a higher fat milk with it. Um, I'm not into any of this low fat stuff. Good quality, high fat food is good within, you know, as long as you're not sitting there eating jars of coconut oil every day, uh, which most of us are not. Um, but I don't have an issue with coffee, but you need to see how coffee responds to you, how the caffeine responds to you. I will, I will tell you that I know that when I drink certain drinks, it triggers, I sense, I feel in me, it triggers a sugar spike because then I have carb cravings afterwards. So for example, I don't do it very often, but when I have Diet Coke, within 10 minutes, it spikes in me a sugar craving and then I've got to go and have, you know, whatever carb is available. So I have begun to realize that relationship for me and my body, that the Diet Coke is triggering something that is creating a carb craving for me. If your coffee and your caffeine doesn't do that for you, go ahead and carry on. But pay attention, how do you feel? Does your coffee always need to come with, you know, a, a cookie, does it always need to come with a piece of cake? Um, one of my clients that I worked with in, her, in the morning, she always had to have her coffee always with two chocolate rubble, with two chocolate buns. Um, that was what she had in the mornings and we had to break that cycle and break that mind um, association for her. And now she has her coffee by itself and she's totally fine. But pay attention to you, what does your um, drink trigger in you, if anything, does it stimulate a carb craving, in which case you know it has spiked your insulin. Um, and then within an hour, you may feel that drop. So pay attention to what is going on with you in your body. Um, thank you for that question. Okay, so if you are ready, we are going to start with our yoga session. You do not need a mat. You can do it on the carpet. You can do it on the grass. You can do it on the floor. You can do this anywhere you want. I have um, a carpet and a yoga mat, but really you can do it anywhere that you want, um, wearing any clothes you want, as long as you can move. Warning, today is a blood pumping, heart racing, active, um, sequence it won't always be like that so um make sure if you're feeling hot you have a fan or that you um you know have water next to you i have my water over here next to me so have whatever you need because today's um session sequence is blood pumping because we want to wake ourselves up we want to get energized we want to beat that down that um, low energy turn so I hope you can hear me as I move about. If for whatever reason um, my sound comes in and out as I'm moving, I apologize. Um, but let me know if uh, if my sound does not um, is not consistent as we begin to move. Okay. Before we start, as always, we're just going to sit and take a couple of breaths, and that really is. We just want to balance ourselves, stabilize ourselves, ground ourselves, feel our body, 
How do we feel in this moment? So a couple of deep breaths, breathing through the lungs, not through the shoulders. So look at yourself and pay attention. Are you breathing like this? In which case, drop the shoulders and pay attention to breathing through the lungs. Couple of deep breaths, you can close your eyes, you can open your eyes, whatever you want. And just really think about how your body is feeling in this very moment. Listening, pay attention. And we're slowly going to move ourselves into cat pose, being on all fours, hands, shoulder widths apart, knees are hip widths apart. And we're just going to release our lower spine. So as we inhale, our back arch is down, our head comes all the way up, our arms are strong, our shoulders are down. Feel the increased capacity of um, your lungs, really breathing deep. And then as you exhale, arch the back all the way up, head goes all the way down and exhale. And we really want to increase our breathing capacity. That's the first way to boost the energy in your body is to really get that breath. So inhale and exhale, head goes down. One more time. And we're going to now do um, sun salutation sequence we're going to do it in a um, few different ways we're going to start off with the basic level and then we're going to add as we go on so pay attention do what you can do i will talk all the way through it so you don't get lost i'm just going to move my screen very slightly so that you can um see me just let me check oh one second Yes, so I hope you'll be able to see me the whole time now. Okay, as we move. So, we are going to start from child's pose. Come all the way down as close as you can. Um, butt on your heels. Deep inhale. And as we exhale, we're going to come up. This is level one of sun salutation. Exhale. Inhale. And move your hands a little bit forward as we exhale. We're going to bring the weight over our arms, making sure that the shoulders and the wrists are in one line. But we're bringing the weight forward. We are not dropping. We want to make sure that we are keeping our core, our pelvic floor muscles strong. We are not dropping down. We're going to activate the toes as we inhale. Then we exhale. We're going to come all the way up into downward dog. And adjust yourself so that you have a good downward dog that feels comfortable and good for you. A couple of breaths, inhale, exhale, bend the knees, and we're going to come back down as we exhale, inhale, and rest back into child's pose. Basic, basic sun salutation. We're going to do it a couple more times. You can do it as slow or as fast as you like. I want you to pay attention to the stages, so don't do it too fast. Um, and then after a couple of these rounds, we're going to um, increase intensity to a slightly more complicated sun salutation. Hopefully, you should all be getting sweaty. That's the point. Inhale, we're going to start a child's pose. Exhale, we're going to come up to cat, making sure the back is flat, no arching of the back. Bring the hands a bit forward as you inhale again. Exhale, leaning all the way forward, getting that good arm muscle work, working um, to strengthen bone muscle and arms, breath, making sure that our pelvic floor muscles are engaged, that we're breathing, that our core muscles are engaged, we're not dropping. Activate the toes as you inhale, and then exhale, come all the way up. And 
and stretching it out. Three breaths. Inhale, exhale. Bend the knees, come back down, and release it out into child's pose. One more time. Deep inhale, exhale, come up into cat. Inhale, bring the hands slightly forward, exhale, move all the way forward. Inhale, activate the toes, exhale, come up into downward dog. Three breaths, and at the end of these three breaths, we're not going to come back to being on all fours to cat. We're going to bend the knees and jump forward. Inhale, and as you exhale, come up to standing. Okay, everyone take a breath. I'm just going to see if there are any comments, and then we're going to go on to the next level. Okay. Our next level, we are standing. Um, we are going to up our energy movement, our blood flow and our, our activity. So stay with me. Deep inhale, hands come up. Exhale, come all the way down. Bend the knees, inhale. And as you exhale, come up. One more time, inhale. Exhale, come down. We're now going to take our right foot all the way back. So we are going to be in a low lunge. Knee and ankle are in one line. Do not bring the weight forward. We want the weight to be back. So the back leg is working hard. Low lunge. Breathe. Place each hand below the shoulder and take the left leg back and come into plank. Again, strong arms, strong pelvic floor muscles as you're breathing, strong core, breathe, and then gently come down into cobra. Be careful how high you lift. If it hurts your back, do not lift up high, stay low. Deep inhale, activate the toes again, exhale, and come into downward dog. And adjust yourself so that you feel in a good downward dog position. Three breaths, bend the knees if you need to. Feel that deep stretch, inhale, bend the knees, exhale, jump forward. Inhale, exhale, come back up. And one more time. Come to the front of your mat or the front of where you're practicing. Deep inhale, exhale, come down. Bend the knees, inhale, and as you exhale, come all the way up. One more time, deep inhale. And exhale, come down. This time we're gonna take the left leg back. So right leg stays forward, knee and heel in the same line. The weight is back, the back leg is stretching. Nice deep stretch. Hand on either side below your shoulders and take the right leg back. Bring the weight a bit forward into a plank and drop down slowly into cobra again. Pay attention to how high you can lift without it hurting your back. Deep inhale, activate the toes and lift all the way up into your downward dog. Stretch it out. Three breaths. Bend the knees, inhale, and jump forward as you exhale, coming all the way up. How is everyone feeling? I have one more level that I would like to take you all on, but let me just see if there are any comments, how you're doing, how you are all feeling. Okay. If you are ready i'm gonna take it up one more level um you can carry on with the two levels we've done until now but for those of you that want to take it up a notch that are feeling that they are in the zone and they want another cycle we're going to do um, a third higher level 
But if you're not ready for that, carry on doing what we were doing, either level one or level two, whatever you would like. Okay. No problem. An alternative to jumping, there's been a comment about the jumping. An alternative to jumping, you could just do one leg at a time. So you're over here in downward dog, bend the knees and jump. If you can't bend the knees and jump, bend the knees, one leg, two leg, and come up. Totally, totally fine. No reason to jump if you can't jump. If you want to do one leg and then the second leg to the um, standing position, totally, totally fine. Okay. Level three. I am sweating. I don't know about you ladies. Inhale. And exhale. Come all the way down. Bend the knees. Inhale. Come all the way up. Inhale and down one more time. Exhale and we're going to take the right leg back. Left leg is forward, hips are facing forward, low lunge. Feel that stretch, feel the back leg really stretched out. We're going to take the right hand, put it next to the left leg and twist from the pelvis through the spine, through the back. And once you're fully twisted, you can lift up the arm and breathe. Bring the left hand down next to the left leg and take the left leg back. All the weight forward. Down and up. Breathe, inhale, exhale the whole time. Don't hold your breath. Activate the toes, deep inhale, exhale and come up into downward dog. Yes, I am speeding it up a bit. I want the blood to be pumping. I want you to be moving. Make sure you breathe. Deep inhale and exhale, three breaths. And either jump forward or walk it forward, right foot, left foot. Exhale, come all the way up. Come to the front of your mat. Inhale. Exhale, come all the way down. And we're going to take the left leg back. So our right leg is forward. Deep breath work. Feel that back leg stretching out. Right, uh, left hand goes next to left, uh, right leg. Twist through the pelvis, through the spine, through the chest, and only after you've twisted, lift up your hand. Feel that straight line from the fingers and the right arm all the way through to the fingers and the left. Bring your right arm back down next to you. Take your right leg out, bring the weight forward into plank, come all the way down, come up into cobra, into whatever level is good for you, wherever you, wherever you begin to feel that pain in the back, drop it. You don't want to feel any pain, you want to feel open chest. Deep inhale, activate the toes, exhale, into your downward dog. Three breaths, and then either jump forward or walk it forward. Inhale and exhale as you come up. And breathe. And come to sitting. And take a big drink of water. So. I hope you are all sweating. I hope that you feel energized. Blood is pumping. You may feel like you need to lie down for five minutes, um, or you may need to go and have a shower, or you may just sit in air conditioning. All of that is fine. But that is a short 20 minute um, routine of how to wake yourself up, how to energize yourself, feel as I said, that blood pumping, you are awake now, there is no question. Um, it doesn't need to take long, you don't need an hour workout um, to wake yourself up. It can be short like this. So um, let me know how it goes, let me know how you felt in today's movement. We're gonna sit and breathe just for a moment so that you can 
catch your breath and also listen to how your body feels now after practice. So just take a breath or two. Think about how your body feels now compared to how it felt before the um, yoga flow. And let me know how it went. Let me know how you feel. Let me know if this was helpful. And put your comments, um, you know, below this video. And I really want to hear from you because this is for you, ladies. These five days of feeling fantastic is all about you feeling fantastic in small, practical, easy to implement ways. Um, and to really help you navigate this stage of life. And really understanding why you may be experiencing these things and how you can manage them. So let me know how it's gone. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, same time, same place for day two of um, five days of feeling fantastic. And tomorrow's um, symptom that we are going to be looking at just in case um, you want a sneak peek. Let me just find which one it is um, because I can never remember the order in which I go in. But tomorrow's five days of feeling fantastic is going to be... One second. Hot flashes and night sweats, which is the most common and well-known menopause symptoms. So if you're experiencing a hot flashes, night sweats or anything like that, you want to be here tomorrow. But I hope you've enjoyed today. Have a fantastic day. I'm going to go and have a shower now and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.